Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we're going to do a Zeiss LRP S3 review. We're going to take a look to see if this is one of the best Zeiss hunting scopes you can pick up, or if you're better off going with something like the Conquest V4, which is going to be a lighter weight option. We're going to go through some of those specs and details, why you might pick this scope and why you might not, and to see if it's going to fit your needs. Always appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Put links to those down in the description as well as a link to our website, backwoodspursuit.com. A bunch of gear reviews over there, so definitely go check out the website. Let's get started. All right, so the Zeiss LRP S3, we're gonna take a look at some of the specs and data here and look at what makes this possibly a really good long range hunting scope. So the, the magnification range here on this one, this is the four to 25 by 50 model, also comes in a six to 36 by 56. So that's a super long range type of a scope. But even this one here is gonna get you farther than most hunting situations that you're ever gonna need but it does allow you to use this in up close situations being that it offers 4X on the minimum range, but also can take you up to that 25X when needed. Now, one of the downsides that you typically have with these long range type of scopes is the weight. And that is the case here with the LRP S3. It comes in at 36 ounces, just over 36 ounces. And the larger model, the six to 36 by 56 comes in at just over 39 ounces. So certainly not a lightweight type of a scope. So if you're building a lightweight rifle, you can steer away from this because it's not going to accomplish what you're looking for. But if you're okay with a little bit extra weight here, you get an incredible amount of elevation adjustment and incredible scope. The elevation adjustment on this model, this being the 4 to 25 by 50, gives you 160 minutes of elevation or 46 and a half MRADs. And uh, the larger model, the 6 to 36 by 56, gives you 110 minutes of elevation or 32 MRAD. So you get a ton of elevation and way more than you're probably going to need for most hunting situations, but it does allow you to have that there. And it also allows you to go down to that minimum magnification of 4X for a lot of those situations if you're in the timber or in a tighter spot where you really don't need much more than that. So it accomplishes both really well. Now, both of these are first focal plane scopes, whereas that Conquest V4 is a second focal plane. So depending on what your preference is, this may or may not be that, but this is a first focal plane. So if you are someone who likes to utilize those, the sub tensions and the windage hash marks, then this is a great option. It's easier to use and easier to make those adjustments on the fly. It may or may not be what you're looking for as far as first focal plane, but if you are looking for first focal plane, I really, really like the reticle in this scope. It's fine enough, even at highest magnification, that you can still utilize it and it's not gonna completely block out the target, whatever you're shooting at. So I really, really like that about the LRP S3. Now the main tube here is 34 millimeters and the windage turret here does lock, which I really like in a hunting scope. If I'm gonna pick one turret to lock, if I can only have one, it's definitely gonna be that windage turret. That's the one that seems to always move on me when the rifle is slung over my backpack or on my shoulder, rubbing on the backpack or whatnot, hiking around the hills. I don't mind the elevation turret not locking. It is kind of nice when it does, but I really don't mind it because it's not one that gets moved all that often. And the clicks that you get here with this LRPS3 are really nice and defined, very tactile and very defined. So I really, really like that about the LRPS3. The, the turrets are on the large side, certainly. They're larger than most hunting scopes. So you may have the cartridge here when it's ejecting that the brass, you may have the hit on the underneath, you know, underneath side, depending on how high you've got the scope mounted and whatnot. But it's uh, certainly larger on the turrets than a lot of your hunting scopes. So keep that in mind. Just makes the overall package a little more bulky and of course a little heavier, which is why this is, may or may not be something that you want to see as a hunting scope. But for me personally, on this type of a build, I don't mind a bigger, heavier scope because this is the build that I'm looking at for a longer range situation for an elk hunt that I have coming up where the ranges can really extend out there quite a ways. So in this case, I don't mind it. If I'm building an ultralight type of rifle, that's a different story possibly, but this can be a fantastic long range hunting scope. Now I've had this out at the range about a half dozen or more times, getting a load developed for this rifle, getting this thing dialed in and ready for that late season elk hunt that we've got coming up. So I'm very confident with it now. 
Now the LRP S3 does have a parallax adjustment here. You kind of expect that in a scope of this caliber, but it is nice and smooth. And then you also have an illuminated reticle. Now, one unique thing about this scope is that you have the option of either a green illumination or red illumination. That's nice for various lighting conditions you might find yourself in. And the, the illumination is set up so that every other click is on and off and increases or decreases the intensity of that color depending on which direction you're turning the knob. As you can see here, the illumination is currently set too high and that light for the illumination is cascading throughout the entire reticle. So if you see this, you know your illumination setting is too high. So go ahead and back that down a couple of clicks until you see just the center of the reticle illuminated getting pretty close there. One more click down and we're about where we're supposed to be. So if you see that illumination starting to spread throughout the entire reticle, you know that is too high. That's not really the way it's designed. It's designed to have only that center be illuminated. So that is the LRP S3, our first look. We're gonna give a full review on this after we get this out in the field and take it on that elk hunt, beat it up a little bit, haul it around the mountains. And then that full review is gonna be over on the website backwoodspursuit.com. Definitely stay tuned and check that out. But for now, LRP S3 seems to be a great hunting scope if you're willing to carry the extra weight and have a little bit of extra bulk here. So obviously if you're not doing a lightweight type of a build, this is a fantastic scope with excellent optics and a ton of elevation adjustment if you want and need that. Drop any questions or comments for us. We'd love to help you out if we can. Thanks for watching here today and we will see you next time.